Hey guys, Ross here, and I am super pumped to be able to bring you my CJC 1295 IPA Morella NODAC protocol. Now, just a quick disclaimer, as you probably already know, I am not a medical professional. I, this is not medical advice. Always consult with a healthcare professional before using any form of peptides. In fact, you shouldn't take anything that I say with any authority because all of my information is just coming from research paper, papers that I read in using critical thinking ability. And for some people that might be just a tad too much. So let's get into it. Right now, there's a common mistake that people are making with CJC 1295, and it's typically the fault of the physicians who are referring it to them. And I am going to expose it today. Now, feel free to leave your comments down below, but most people are taking a morning dose, a pre-dose, and they're taking 400 to 600 plus micrograms per injection. I actually find that number to be significantly higher. Most people are taking at least a thousand micrograms per injection. And their assumption is that more peptide equals more hormone growth. And this is just not true. And that's what we're going to be breaking down here. It's the fundamental um, backbone of how you should space it. You see, the problem shows that if you are taking a high dosage that you are going to have receptor desensitization, diminishing returns, and unnecessary spending because now you're going to use up your vials two to three times as fast, depending on how much you are taking. Now, why do people do this? Why do they take a high dose? Well, when you take the CJC 1295 of Initially, you'll get a flushing feeling. It is an, um, a histamine response that your body has. And a lot of people think that the, the flushing, oh, okay, it's working. Well, it's a histamine response. So the more you take, the greater that feeling is going to be. But that is not the actual growth hormone. That's what triggers the growth hormone. And studies, which we're going to show here, show that this not to be true. You see, the real goal of what we have is to get IGF-1 production. For most of us, that's the goal, but de depending on why you're using it. And so when you inject the peptide, the growth hormone pulse is only in you. You only have growth, ho growth hormone in you for 20 to 30 minutes. It stimulates liver production, which stimulates IGF-1 production, where uh, that's where the benefits occur. So it gives you fat loss, recovery, lean ma muscle mass, all of these benefits. Now, the strategy is that you want to maintain IGF-1 throughout the day. And you can maintain a steady state of it throughout the day. It's going to help mobilize fat. It's going to help your body protect muscle. Instead of using muscle for uh, fuel, it's going to lean towards fat. And so while CJC 1295 Ipamorelin is not like a GLP-1 where it's making you not hungry and that's how you're using losing fat, so it's not going to lose it for you. If you're already doing things like working out and eating in a caloric deficit and all that, it's going to enhance all your results because when you're in a caloric deficit, your body sometimes wants to use lean mass for fuel. And so it's going to help you protect that by having this IGF-1 production. Also, as you're working out and you're contracting your muscles and you're put, getting micro tears as you go to sleep, that IGF if one is going to help you recover much faster. In fact, I feel like almost like when I was a kid and I'd go outside and play hockey, roller hockey all day, I'd come in sore, shower up, go to sleep and the next day, be able to do it again. That's how it makes you feel. So we need to understand a few rules before you understand why I do the protocol that I do, which it's the one you shouldn't do because I'm not a doctor. But you have to understand that growth hormone, it pulses 10 to 20 times throughout the day. There's burst patterns, so it's not a consistent release. And that your body is designed and optimized for these pulses. And so there's research that I put on here. You can uh, screenshot it because I'm not going to pretend to know how to say all these things properly. I just read through the documents. And you can see, if you want to know that that's true, you can go to Surya, whatever, at, at L. You can Google that, 2009. You can read how the uh, growth hormone releases. But here's why that's important. Because rule number two is that there is a maximum release per pulse. So like, let's say that you have one of those water filters that you fill up water in it and it, and it turns, you know, gets, filters your water down and then you have a little tap and you can pour it out. There's a maximum amount of water that can come out of that thing before it runs out. So let's say that you drain it and it runs out. So then the second you drain it and runs out, what do you do? You pour water in the top of the, um, in the filter, and now it starts refilling right away. But it takes a little while to refill. It doesn't refill instantly. So if you were to tap that pulse again right away, there's not much water that can even come out. And even though you don't release all of your growth hormone because it stores a bit, 
there is a maximum release that is ready to go out of any given point. It's primed and ready to go. And so what the studies show, and um, on the next page, I actually have the study that I read through. I forget what the name of it was. So you can screenshot that, read that for yourself as well, is that when you get over 250 to 300 micrograms of the peptide, that you don't actually release any more growth hormone. All you do is increase your response of flushing to it, but no more growth hormone actually comes out. So what happens if you do bump it up to 500, 600, or as I was doing, because this is how I was told, 1,000 micrograms? Well, you have the same GH output, same growth hormone output, faster desensitization. Now you've wasted product, and it's going to cost you more because now something that uh, was only going to um, that could have lasted 20 to 30 days is only going to last you 10 days and you're going to have to keep buying it. And the stuff's not cheap. So there's no added benefit beyond going over the 300 microgram threshold. So why are people doing this? Why are they going up? I was told, you know, starting off at 500 micrograms through, for the first three nights and then bump it up to a thousand. Uh, it makes no sense. The same amount of growth hormone comes out. Now people feel the flushing more. So maybe in their mind, they think, oh, now it's working. I will tell you, I have to pay extra attention after I take a 300 microgram injection to even know, feel flushing or like a warm face. It's not near the response that I had before. I have to pay extra attention, but I'm sleeping just as good. I'm having the same recovery. In fact, I can see because what I did is I was only taking one dose an hour before bed at night of a thousand micrograms. Now I'm taking only 300, 250 to 300 at night, 250 to 300 in the morning. So I'm taking half of the amount that I was, but now I'm getting two pulses with two full growth hormone releases for half the cost. We have to think about the cost and the benefits. I'm getting better results because of it. So I'm getting more growth hormone, more IGF-1 levels, steady state, for, and it's not as expensive. So rule number three that we have to understand is that pulse spacing matters. Remember that idea of filling up the tap and then, you know, filling up water and so forth? Our pituitary glands work the same way. So the second that that um, gland releases growth hormone, it starts refilling instantly. But screenshot this Halsey whatever at L uh, in 1986 did a study. And uh, keep in mind, this is not factual because it's an old study. But in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, I want to make sure I'm getting the most out of this. It showed that the growth hormone recovery was roughly like every two to five hours. So like if I were to release my growth hormone and then an hour later release it again, I'm not going to get the second the same amount of growth hormone on the second release. Isn't that interesting to think about? Because I've drained already my growth hormone. Natural spacing is about three to five hours in between is what we're looking at. So for me to be safe, to make sure I maximize, I'm spending all this money. I want to maximize my potential benefits is that I want to allow for at least three hours between my doses to prevent overlap and weakening of a pulse. So then why are we taking it an hour before we go to bed when we're about to have our greatest natural pulse ever? Well, the idea of that would be, well, it doesn't release for 60 to 90 minutes into your sleep, but even still, it's not the greatest natural pulse ever. So my theory would be take it two to three hours before you go to sleep. That's what I'm doing. Once again, you shouldn't do what I do because I'm just an idiot on YouTube. So my optimized protocol is this dose number one, three hours before I go to sleep. This triggers a full pulse. And I do this fasted. So it means I had to stop eating at six. So that way I could take my injection at eight. And there's benefits to the intermittent fasting anyways. So I could take my first dosage at eight. And then I can be in bed by 10, 30, 11 o'clock. And then by the time my next um, pulse happens, I'm primed up and ready to go. Next morning, I wake up. I'm still fasted. You know what I do? I go in. I do one more injection. One more injection, uh, and then I go take a walk on the treadmill for 45, 60 minutes. I don't eat for another 60 minutes. And the reason for that is you want the uh, the growth hormone to release. You want the maximum response. response. Insulin will uh, blunt that. And also you get fat mobilization when that happens. Your body will prefer, it releases triglycerides 
from your fat cells and it releases them into your bloodstream. And so if you go do low intensity walking, all of the mobilized fat that's in your bloodstream from while you were sleeping and from the injection you just did is now going to be um, utilized while you're walking at a low intensity for burning it off. It's an, it's wonderful. It's a no brainer. I mean, my fat is dropping. I've, I can see in the pictures that I'm getting leaner. My chest fat is almost non-existent now. I used to have like this chest fat that right. It was right here. And in just like three weeks, three and a half weeks, it's, it's not near what it was. It's getting tight. It's getting full. So I'm getting two complete non-overlapping pulses in stable IGF-1 throughout the entire day by doing it this way. So here's why this saves you money and time. Well, one is that you're still getting the maximum efficiency of, uh, of your respond, your pituitary response, and you're only using 250 to th uh, 300 micrograms. You avoid waste. So the higher doses don't equal growth hormone output. You prevent burnout because you have proper spacing that maintains long-term sensitivity. So now I'm going three months, one month off. I'm not doing five days um, and then two days off because I'm not going to burn out as quick. I've, I'm I'm not blasting it with a thousand micrograms a night. And then I have a lower cost because my vials are going to last me longer. So strategic timing, it beats mega dosing every single time. So one core principle to remember is that you maximize growth hormone through properly spaced, complete pulses, not higher doses that desensitize your receptors. Guys, if you want to learn more about nutritional timing, training, cycling strategies, all these things that I'm doing, um, make sure that you subscribe to this channel because I'm going to continue to push this stuff out. Also, before you do anything, always make sure to consult with your doctor. One danger to IGF-1 in your body is that if you have cancer, it can increase the speed at which it grows because it is a growth hormone. It does not cause cancer, but if you have cancer in you, it can increase the speed in which it grows. So it is something that you want to make sure you're doing because these are all considered by the uh, government as research peptides. Uh, they are not FDA approved. And so you have to speak to someone at a clinic or something. You can also go to uh, myrecomposition.com. That is the clinic I work with. And you can get your peptides through there. Uh, anyways, have an awesome day. Thank you very much.